Well everyone, it's time to finish what I finally started and this is I think the last Xbox console that I have to review and I think at this point I've reviewed every single Xbox console I've ever made. I've, made, I've reviewed the first one, I reviewed the 360, the 360S, all the Xbox Ones until those Series X comes out and the last one I had to do was the Xbox 360E and this console, you know, at first I didn't even know anything about it, you know, I didn't even know Xbox made this console or Microsoft made it and and I think it still kind of holds up even in 2020 for sure. And this was the last Xbox console ever made until Xbox released or Microsoft released the Xbox One. So this one was released in 2013 and eventually whatever point the Xbox One came out. So this was the last one in the 360 lineup and this one was succeeding the 360S which I've already reviewed in a couple months ago I think and what's really cool about this one is you can kind of see how Microsoft was kind of combining both like the 360 lineup and the one lineup and you know this was a cool stepping stone in order to, for us to get into the whole entire one lineup in general because this one kind of looks like a mix between both if I'm being honest so on the outside you can see you know it, it doesn't look like a bad console at all you know I think we're all pretty familiar in how every single Microsoft console looks at this point now looking on the front of this thing or at least for the front where you're going to see it most often you have the xbox 360 logo obviously and you have you know the little eject button and the power button up front this thing still uses a disc slot obviously all consoles still do and so you would use that eject button and be able to you know obviously take that disc out and put in whatever disc you want to now in the bottom left of the console depending on where you're looking at it you had at first what i thought was like a memory card slot or something i didn't even know what i was talking about but i clicked in it but then I saw that it's actually two USB ports on the front, which is really cool. Now, what's weird though, is that with the newer Xbox consoles, we only have one USB port, which I don't understand why they went backwards, but you do have two on this thing, which is really cool and I'm really happy about. On the top, you have the fan selection and the fan exhaust thing, so you can get, you know, that it would suck in air from the top and then, you know, blow it out from the back or whatever. And on the back is where all the fun is. So we have an additional two USB ports, which is really cool. We have the connect slot if you want to, <laughs> I forgot about that the ethernet port, an HDMI port, an AV out, as well as that AC adapter in order for this thing to get power. And honestly, I've owned the 360, the 360S, and all these other ones, and this one has some really good heft to it. It does not feel like a cheap console. Obviously, all consoles pretty much still feel like this, but this one actually feels like a pretty premium console still, which I'm really happy about. I was feeling it in my hands, and you know, I was actually holding it while I was recording this audio. <laughs> And it doesn't feel like a cheap console at all. And I think that's what people usually typically, you know, kind of stereotype is that older consoles always feel cheap. And that is not the case at all. The original Xbox even felt pretty good. Obviously, that one doesn't feel that good anymore. But the 360S felt really good. The PS3, the original one, even the PS3 Slim feels really good too. So, so for sure, the external of this console still holds up, I think, in 2020. We have a lot of USB ports on this thing too, which is really cool. Now, when this thing first came out, it didn't cost, you know, $500 or anything crazy. The base model with no connect and there was a four gigabyte model had a price tag of two hundred dollars and there was a top tier model that had 256 gigs for three hundred dollars however the weird thing is with a four gigabyte model that had the connect would cost three hundred dollars now my question is is the connect that big of a thing i've never owned one i played with one a while ago but is the connect that big of a thing for you guys to spend money on and i have a question for you guys if you had a connect still or if you ever used a connect is it fun like would you guys go and actually still play it? And do you think it's still worth it in 2020? I might actually make a separate video talking about that. But what's really funny is, and shout out to xbox.fandom.com. I always forget to shout them out. This is where I'm getting a lot of this information from. One of the biggest, I guess, things about this console was that coming from the predecessor, which was the Xbox 360S, there wasn't really too many crazy things, you know, that this specific console brought. The Xbox 360E was more, I think, like an outer refresh and it was supposed to be, you know, just kind of a smaller console overall and kind of a redesign to match the Xbox One rather than, you know, looking like the older console like the 360S. Because the 360S, I liked how it looked and everything, but it did kind of look more so like the 360 than an Xbox One. So this one, like I said in the beginning of the video, kind of merged the two, which was really cool. Now, another interesting thing that they did was they actually removed apparently a versatile connection. That's what this website says which allowed you to do audio out on, you know, earlier Xbox 360 models. So at this point, the only way you could get the audio out was with an HDMI connection. Now, I'm already kind of used to that. I think we all are. I think we all use HDMIs now, but I guess at that point, that was a pretty big deal. Now, another thing, the Xbox 360S also got rid of a USB port. So the Xbox 360S actually had five USB ports, where this one only had four, which I think is still good for a lot of people. But like I said, having more is always way better than having less. 
And actually, interestingly enough, like I stated earlier, this thing was the last Xbox console to have a pop open disk drive, which is what I was talking about earlier. You had to go and pop that out in order to get the disk out, unlike the Xbox One series where, you know, it automatically just comes out. You can take it out and put it back in without having, like, you know, you to put it on top of the thing or whatever. So I think in terms of, the, you know, the outside and everything that this console brought and was similar with, with the previous ones, I think, you know, it, it makes sense. You know what I mean? They weren't trying to go and reinvent the wheel. They were already coming out with the Xbox One and they knew that. So they weren't going to go and, you know, change up this whole entire thing just for that. You know what I mean? So in terms of the outside... I want to say it gets a thumbs up in my books for sure. Now, the main reason why people get this console isn't because of the way it looks, obviously. It's because of the game selection. And there are so many games out for this thing and classic games as well. And when you look at them, I mean, the graphics still hold up. The graphics are extremely great on a lot of these consoles. They look really good. The controller is still top tier, as you guys know. I mean, it's such a classic controller. And if you have the capability, I mean, the games aren't even that expensive anymore. And that's another humongous plus for this gaming console. You have the capability of doing so much and still going on Xbox Live if you want to, I guess, and playing with your friends sometimes that it makes sense to pick it up in some ways. It's still not like a top tier console. I don't think it's, you know, like the best console in the world anymore. And I think, you know, going from an original Xbox 360 to this one, you might even be losing some things, like I still did the you the lack of some usb ports and everything like that but i still think for a majority of people out there the games themselves will make up for the fact of you know losing a usb port or anything like that now another thing when i'm playing games on this thing it's not extremely loud so keep that in mind it doesn't the fans don't ramp up like crazy i have seen on reddit posts that a lot of people have complained a couple times about the xbox 360e's fan lineup and how it kind of you know gets a little loud sometimes compared to previous models me personally i have not experienced that but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist i've had things like that happen all over the place you know where i experience things and vice versa where people haven't so i definitely do think that for sure this type of console in this type of price range i only paid i think like 40 something dollars for this i think maybe like it was definitely less than 60 i bought it over a year ago i was supposed to review it last year but i just haven't gotten the chance to do it but for sure when it comes down to it the gaming selection that everything about this console is still holding up quite well now the question is should you pick it up in 2020 or is it even worth it in 2020? I will probably tell you, I think if you have a bunch of Xbox 360 games that you want to play and you don't have any other console, I think this is probably a really good way to go. I'm not aware too much if, if you're able to modify this, if there's any ways to modify it or get any ROMs on it or get any other emulators on it either. I'm not too sure. If I do find out, I'll probably put something on the screen or maybe I won't. I don't really know. But I do think that behind every single thing like this and behind every console, there is probably some way to modify it. So I'll keep you guys posted and I'll post it on the screen or keep a link down in the description of whether it is able to be modded or not. But I think if you're somebody who has a lot of games out for this specific console on this whole entire lineup, the Xbox 360e is probably a really good way to go. I think it has a lot of value still for those type of people. But if you're trying to find a good budget console to kind of get the most value out of it, I think getting the original Xbox One is probably the better way to go. But even on top of that, I would probably get a used Xbox One S. Those things are much better in my opinion. They have a lot of capability. They're much smaller, they're much quieter, and you have capability of playing a ton of games out for that thing too. And that thing is still, you know, super relevant in this day and age. Up until when the Xbox Series X comes out, that's when people are going to start talking about that more than the Xbox One S lineup. But I think for sure, if you're somebody who constantly plays games or anything, the Xbox 360 is a great way to go. But like I stated, you're probably better off picking up an Xbox One, whether that is the original one or the Xbox One S. Obviously, the Xbox One X is the best one right now, but I think for a lot of people, the Xbox One S is probably the better way to go. So I'll go ahead and leave that link down below as well. I'll try to find an Xbox 360e if any of you guys want to buy it. But I will tell you, this thing surprised me a lot. I was not expecting this thing to be as great as it was. I was expecting it to be, you know, not, you know, pretty much more like the Xbox 360s, but it's better than what I thought. So I think that in and of itself gives this thing a thumbs up in my books. I think it's super important, and if you own one, I want to hear your experience with it. How, have you, how has it been owning one of these consoles, especially if you're somebody who uses it a lot? Let me know in the comment section below, but that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys could check it out. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.